How you doing? It's Ryan with 1075 Emergency Vehicles. What we're going over is some updates to our previous video regarding the 2021 Chevy Tahoe. Uh, we were able to get a hold of the uh, option booklet, it looks like, uh, with information regarding it. So we're going to go over again the uh, features of this vehicle that relating to upfitting. Um, so they're talking about standard new features, four-wheel independent suspension, police-specific front seats, ignition cylinder replacing the key, the steering wheel mounted switches that um, they're blank switches that you'll be able to tie into your electrical system um, to do auxiliary features like push to talk for your microphone or uh, lighting controls, um, extensive electrical architecture to reduce upfitting, uh, vehicle signals provided in harness, um, some of the features, the problems with the previous one, that's not necessarily have anything to do with the park, but uh, the turn signals was more of like a stop tail turn uh, that you would need for multiple things so you weren't getting a good clean turn signal but they're saying you get door jar brake supplied park surveillance mode and IP dimming uh, it looks like protected idle so a secure ignition override um, is going to be a standard feature uh, the dash mounted push button transmission which we'll show you a picture of that's going to be a standard one that we're not sure of how everybody's going to react they're moving another 110 volt outlet to the rear if you put a cabinet back there, it's going to uh, interfere with that, so you'll need some type of extension. Uh, they're upgrading the alternator from 170 amp to 250 amp. Uh, the factory main battery is going from a 760 cold cranking 70 amp battery to a 995 amp hour battery, which is a good thing. Uh, you can see the rear cargo area is dipped down like we thought it was going to be, so you're going to be retiring, requiring some type of replacement for increased approach angle. They're talking about larger side view mirrors. Uh, they have USB-C charging points in the rear cargo area and lower dash, so we'll have to be figuring out a way to extend those. Uh, the one thing I'm not sure about is they're talking about the Parman radio microphone provision wiring. I'm assuming that they're talking about tying in probably like the Bluetooth mic that's usually mounted in the headliner. Um, Wiring provisions for outside mirror and cargo area side windows, which is a great feature because everybody hates going through those plugs. Uh, the outside mirrors has been something that the Ford utility has had for a while and is a very good time saver. Uh, wiring provisions in front doors for customer furnished exterior mirror lighting. So we're guessing maybe they're, you have to tie in the doors in order to use them. We'll have to get some more information about that. Wire provision, a rear cargo headliner for customer furnished lighting. And then some of the optional new features are red and blue LED tailgate lighting with on off switch, which will show you a picture that'll look interesting, very similar to what the Ford does. Uh, rear camera mirror allows full view with canine insert and partitions. Um, we'll, we'll check out the picture for that. LED spotlights, that's always been there. The other thing that's nice too that they're doing is their optional second row seat delete ships incomplete vehicle. So that's nice for if you're doing canine inserts, command vehicles where you're taking out the second row seat or full transport seat replacement seats for people that don't necessarily want to store that seat. Hopefully it's a cost savings, not an additional charge, but they have put in parentheses that uh, the ships as an incomplete vehicle. So you may have to do something else with that vehicle after that's done. 18 of the push button electrical shift panel. So they're doing the, the button remote keyless entry system. So if you're within three feet of the vehicle and you press the button, the doors will unlock. If you, the, that's where the keyless entry is. And then the push to start ignition, you can see to the right of the steering column um, where it is traditionally on most vehicles. So the protected idle feature allows the vehicle to remain idling but not allow the transmission to be shifted. So it looks like it's tied into and it's using um, all factory stuff. So it's talking about for activation, press and hold the cruise cancel switch for two seconds. The vehicle will actually give you feedback on the protected. It'll say uh, upon activation of protected idle, the digital information center will display the following. Protected idle on, park in open area, take your key. If any, and then it'll actually um, let you know that if it's not meeting any of the precursors to it, to deactivate uh, the valid key fob is present, press the brake pedal and shift that apart, or press and hold the cruise cancel switch. 
Press the ignition switch with the brake pedal pressed. The DIC message will turn off indicated protect idle. So it seems like it will be a fairly uh, seamless transition um, to get back into the vehicle, especially with that key fob, which was always a question for that. See the steering wheel buttons. Um, it says the steering wheel has two momentary button switches on the left backside, which have been repurposed for the operation of emergency equipment, such as lighting or radios. Uh, switches close when depressed to operate emergency equipment via body control module and open when released. The customer device electrical specification must be met to avoid damage to the BCM. BCM can operate a single relay with a maximum inductive energy current so it's talking about adding relays um, to do that in order to use that function which is normal uh, if you tie it into any newer system uh, you don't need the necessarily relays um, another thing that we're talking about is they're talking they have routing grommets so previous model they had the upfitter wiring nipples on the driver's side it looks like they're giving them on what they're calling the driver and the passenger side. The passenger side is over more. The driver's side one is more centered on that vehicle. The auxiliary battery and rear electrical center are located in the rear of the left rear wheelhouse. The upfitter branch harness cargo is coiled to the rear of the auxiliary battery. When we're putting any equipment back there, uh, we're gonna have to account for access for that second battery um, because it is on that driver's side panel with a panel. And then there's a wiring harness coiled up right next to it. Um, it says uh, tag circuits list an upfitter, so that's 25. And then they're talking about the front center upfit branch harness, um, pictured also on 25. Front center area branch upfitter harness was with tag circuits for customer connection. So there looks like there's a whole bunch of wires in both of them that should be useful to some people. So then it's talking about the wire provisions. Uh, that's been a standard thing. It looks like they're still giving you the four signals along with the brakes and stuff. So thanks for checking out our video today. Um, we'll keep you up to date whenever we get more information and uh, can really like it.